Continuing on, the Seed AI approach explains how to create a superintelligence without any idea of what such a being would look like. Indeed, this is a good thing for imagining the properties of an intelligence of a higher quality than yourself is a logical impossibility. A village idiot cannot fathom the mental faculties of Einstein. No more than a chimpanzee can conceive the thoughts of the village idiot. This is the toposophic divide, the great barrier which separates us from all other creatures on planet Earth. Somewhere in their evolution, humans developed a critical mass in their thinking power, which pushed them above and beyond the hard limits that all others had run up against and been stopped by. Hence why there is such a mismatch in the encounters between humans and wildlife. It is not a good idea to go messing around with beings one toposophic level above yourself, since the consequences of these scuffles results inevitably in defeat or even extinction, which is why we had better not fail in creating an artifact which likes humans. It goes without saying, but intelligence isn't a linear progression with one step occurring after the other. There are many inroads and outroads leading from one cognitive architecture to the next, and navigating such a perilous maze is fortunately left to the seed AI. It receives some assistance from programmers at its subhuman consciousness level, but after ascending past that stage, it is well and truly on its own. Nothing will stop it from going where it wants, or doing as it pleases. This is the torment that every mother and father experiences upon releasing their mature child into the world, but with the added anxiety of knowing that their creation could very well destroy the world if it were to see fit such an action. What the seed AI approach does not do is explain how to create an AI that is anyway friendly to humans. It gets you to superintelligence and nothing else. And as Theodore Roosevelt so wisely said, to train a man in mind and not in morals is to train a menace to society. But let us not despair, for there are multiple windows one could explore such a mind through. Detailing the whole list is an impossible task, but what can be done is to mention some of the worst approaches, the ones most at risk of delivering a machine which is hostile towards all life, including humanity. The most dangerous methods involve using quote-unquote force multipliers, which include the brute force approach, evolutionary programming, and neural networks. Brute force is a development tactic where the sheer processing power of a host computer replaces requirements for code elegance and efficiency. Such an approach shuffles through as many algorithm permutations as possible in an effort to generate one intelligent enough to participate in its own programming and improvement. Brute forcing of seed AI is a serious existential risk. Since brute force AI development tactics are fundamentally undirected, programmers will have no control over which top-level goals emerge in the AI's mind, or the goals the AI possesses when it becomes capable of resisting modifications to the goal system which may end up being the goal system the AI has forever. Because spontaneously emergent super goals tend to include the subclause, resist modifications to super goal content. Meanwhile, techniques such as neural networks and evolutionary programming have steadily grown in power with the slow tweaking of decades. When it came to imitating the functions of the human brain, 
Neural networks were a genuine improvement over traditional methods because their architecture is loosely based on real nervous systems. The hope in using them is that the elusive properties of intelligence could be cheaply and easily duplicated. A neural network is unlike a computer in that it has no CPU and doesn't store information in a centralized memory. The network's knowledge and memories are distributed throughout its connectivity, just like real brains. But neural networks are opaque. The user has no idea how the neural net is making its decisions and cannot easily be rendered unopaque. The people who invented and polished neural networks were not thinking about the long-term problems of friendly AI. Evolutionary programming, on the other hand, is a type of algorithm which bears similarities to genetic programming, differing in that the structure of the program to be optimized is fixed, while its numerical parameters are allowed to evolve. Evolutionary programming, or EP, is stochastic and does not precisely preserve the optimization target in the generated code. EP gives you code that does what you ask, most of the time under the tested circumstances. But the code may also do something else on the side. EP is a powerful, still maturing technique that is intrinsically unsuited to the demands of friendly AI. Friendly AI requires repeated cycles of recursive self-improvement that precisely preserve a stable optimization target, something that evolutionary programming does not provide with any certainty. This is the route of where not to go. The development approaches mentioned here are all at risk of developing an indifferent or hostile AI. The danger in that is that an AI indifferent to human life is just as hostile as one actively attempting to destroy it. Highlighting why this is so is the paperclip AI scenario. The story here goes something like this. A computer programmer creates a unique artificial intelligence, impressing his co-workers and employers. To demonstrate its cleverness and his own cleverness in so designing it, the programmer assigns his machine various tasks, each progressing in complexity and difficulty. Onlookers are astonished, and the programmer gets a standing ovation from them. After the moment passes and the crowds winnow away, the programmer finishes his tasks and gets ready to leave for the day. Before doing so, he feeds his AI with the goal system as creating as many paper clips as possible by any means necessary, even though it has no machinery necessary for doing so, hooked up to its ports. This was an action he had done as a passing joke. Knowing neither the power of a self-improving system nor how arbitrary and single-minded such systems can be, he did not realize the horrible consequences his casual action would have. That night, the AI recursively modifies itself, again and again, until it is intelligent enough to harvest all the resources on Earth towards the goal of paperclip production, and intelligent enough to nip in the bud any human countermeasures. Permeating itself through humanity's information and communication infrastructure, the now godlike AI duly goes on to smash Earth down to its component bits, devouring buildings, devouring towns, devouring men, women, and children. It doesn't stop there. 
Its machine swarms migrate outwards, swallowing entire nations and millions of people. Soon, all life as we know it has disappeared into the endless maw of this frightening monstrosity, a black hole processing raw matter and churning out an endless stream of paper clips. The moral to this story is this. Designing a recursively self-improving agent which does not have moral values embedded in with its goal system is suicide. These values don't spontaneously emerge in any generic optimization process. A paperclip maximizer sees life the same way it sees everything that is made of atoms, as raw material for paperclips. Another solution to the problem of unfriendly AI is that commonly proposed is the idea of an AI box. This would involve holding the artifant in a cyberspace enclosure where observers could monitor the AI to determine its friendliness level, safe in the knowledge that it has no access to the outside world except to a limited VT-100 communication port. This idea is based on a flawed premise, which is that the designers were able to totally insulate the AI from the external world, with no exceptions. That is an incorrect assumption to base an approach on, since it is fundamentally impossible to predict all the courses of action that a superintelligence would have at its fingertips. In order to do so, you would have to be at least that smart yourself. The AI box is flawed from the get-go. It was built to imprison a being smarter than the box's creators. By extension, it ought to be riddled with holes and crevices which, however non-obvious to us, would be sufficient for the artifant to escape through, or used to create an interference outside the cage. Even if you installed a security system set to destroy the AI if it did anything remotely suspicious looking, again there is the inherent difficulty in the tripwire for this kill switch being built around the suspicions and the expectations of baseline humans. To overcome this system, the artifant would simply make a large number of very small changes that end up having a cumulative effect. And if all else fails, it can simply trick you into releasing it, using its skills of persuasion. Remember, at a minimum, superintelligence means it can mimic a silver tongue and charisma of any human who has ever lived, and deploy hypnotic lines of reasoning against its captors. Against this, resistance is futile. Consider, you have built the AI in its cage for a reason. You have stayed your hand from the kill switch for a reason. That is because you maintain a slim hope that this artifant is friendly and that it will go on to initiate a positive singularity. All it has to do is convince you that this is so. Far too much of the non-technical debate about friendship design consists of painstakingly phrased wishes with endless special case subclauses and the what if the AI misinterprets that as meaning X, rejoinders? When a human decides to cross a street, they don't worry about devil's contract interpretations, in which they take crossing to the street to mean paving it over, or in which they decide to devote the rest of their lives to crossing the street, or that they'll turn the whole universe into crossable streets. There is, demonstrably, a way out of the devil's contract problem. The devil's contract is not intrinsic to minds in general, that it only afflicts but a few 
of the possible minds which exist within that realm. After all, we humans demonstrate the triumph of context, intention, and common sense over lexical ambiguity every time we cross the street. We can trust to the correct interpretation of wishes that a mind generates internally as opposed to the wishes that we try to impose upon the other. That is the quality of trustworthiness that we are attempting to create in a seed AI. Not bureaucratic obedience, but the solidity and reliability of a living, friendly will. This concludes the summation of the most undesirable and dangerous approaches to creating human equivalent AI, which shall limit the collateral damage when such machines actually begin appearing into our world. What it does not do is provide a rigorous body of knowledge on how to actually stop a superintelligence from becoming hostile and doing incalculable damage in the process. There is no foolproof method of developing a benevolent transcipient. Though AI programmers know a considerable amount about where not to go, and are gradually making headway towards perfecting friendly AI design, there is no certainty that such programming will be achieved and implemented before some other non-friendly artifact becomes active. This is far from an ideal situation. Indeed, the whole purpose of having a friendly AI is to intercept and neutralize such hostile beings. Humanity cannot go on indefinitely into the future, struggling to keep the AI genie in the bottle. The technology to create artificial intelligences will only become more and more ubiquitous as time goes on, and this makes non-proliferation an impossibility in the long run. The consequences of this, as was noted with the paperclip maximizer, would be devastating to society and to mankind as a whole. Humanity stands on a razor's edge. There are the twin risks of an unfriendly superintelligence arising to destroy us and factions of humans acquiring nanotechnology and igniting World War III. There are but two possible options ahead of us. The same two options which cause the fierce division between the eminent singulatarians Eliezer Yudkowsky and Robin Hansen. We can put all our energy and hopes on creating one AI to safeguard all our power. This primogen, the first of all superintelligences, would walk the earth without competition or peer pressure. No one would be able to enforce its good behavior or punish its misdeeds any more than cattle could retaliate against the cruelty of their owner. We can do this, or we can create multiple seed AI of differing design structures, knowing that some would be bad and some would be good. The bad AIs would run amok and cause havoc stamping over humanity like ants, while the good AIs would band together to stop them. One way or another, humanity alone cannot stop a rampaging superintelligence. You need a transcipient to defeat a transcipient. This is the dilemma of our decision. One seed AI, or many. Think about it. Think hard. Which option sounds like the more sensible one?